Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat for Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we go to both uh, Darlington and Road America. We got the Xfinity Series at Road America and Darlington and obviously the Cup Series here at Darlington Raceway for the Southern 500. So hopefully we can have a good run. Uh, we won there in our rookie season of NASCAR Heat 3. So hopefully we can have a chance to do that today. But in the Xfinity Series for Road America, we had subscriber Mike Hawk in the car uh, as he started down at the bottom of the field as he actually failed uh, the pre-race inspection so certainly that was unfortunate for him as he would though be able to move his way forwards uh, slowly but surely as you see him passing by there on the screen now he came through past the midway point of this race continuing to move throughout the field he had actually picked up some damage on the car here and there now as he was coming through on the final lap down the front straightaway for the final time up the large hill here it's a pretty steep hill that they have to go up now as he came through coming down to the line so it wasn't uh, the greatest race for Mike, but he would come through to cross the line to finish P22 here at Road America after starting in the back of the field. It was a pretty successful uh, finish. And in the Xfinity Series for Darlington now, we had uh, subscriber Zach Williams in the car. Actually, one of our better qualifying efforts this season, a little bit ahead of the midfield, which is, like I said, one of the better ones we've had this whole season as he came through at a turn two, getting down to that inside line as quickly as he could as he went down this back straightaway at the inside of the 22 of Austin Sendrick. He would be able to move his way forward. It's not a lot. As as he came through turns three and turns four, but he did at least move forward. Uh, just like I said, not quite a lot now as he came out of turn four. And as he came through now to the final lap, heading down into turns three and turns four, Zach Williams through the center of the corner, trying to get the best finish possible now as he comes out of turns four. It looks like it was Noah Gregson up front as he looks to the inside of Brandon Jones as he comes through to cross the line. Zach Williams comes home in at P12 here for us in the Xfinity Series. So solid finish from him, but our team is likely going to need to win to get into the playoffs now as we come through into Cup Series qualifying for myself, heading down the front straightaway the throwback weekend now as we cross the line, right. hitting a 20. 29.370. We go P12 here for Darlington, so a solid qualifying effort considering how we do it usually at a mile and a half. So on the pole, though, we have got the 18 of Kyle Busch. NASCAR's in Darlington for the running of the Bojangles Southern 500. This unique egg-shaped oval known as the track too tough to tame has become home to the throwback weekend. Join us as we celebrate seven decades of NASCAR. All right, thank you, Rick Allen. We're ready to go green here for the throwback race. The Bojangles Southern 500 is about to be underway. Ryan Priest had to replace the transmission before the race, so he is starting at the back, and so is Paul Menard, who missed the driver's meeting there. As you see his throwback scheme, Kyle Busch's throwback scheme, I did notice a little bit of a glitch that some drivers actually don't use their throwback, like Kevin Harvick, Alex Bowman are a few notables, and uh, so that's unfortunate. But either way, we're ready to go green and get this throwback weekend underway. Is the green flag is that we are green here in Darlington. Kyle Larson, one of our rivals, immediately trying to crowd us up the track, but thankfully we do not make any contact with the 42 of Kyle Larson. He became a rival uh, over six, seven races ago, and we haven't even touched his car since then, and he's still a rival, which is very unfortunate now as we come through turns one and on the exit of turn two, heading down this back straightaway. There's a 24 car up the inside. What a beautiful paint scheme that is. Certainly one of the better throwbacks yeah, in the, the field now as we come through turns around, three man. and turns four behind that 24 car of William Byron now as we head down this front straightaway. Kyle Busch leads the opening lap here for the Southern 500 with 23 to go in this opening stage. A pretty lengthy race here in Darlington and if we can just keep out of trouble, obviously we know that the wall is right there on our right hand side. It's so kind of expected well. that we're going to hit the wall as we make uh, it up the inside there of the 24 of William Byron, but like I was saying, I think if we can just keep the car clean, we'll probably have a pretty good chance here at a top 10 finish at least as we can do though on lap 7. Actually kind of getting held up behind our rival of Kyle Larson, our teammate Eric Amarola. He drove past me on the exit of turn two. Uh, William Byron had obviously driven away. He's way down there as we go down towards turns three. Kyle was continuing to lead at this point as I was a little nervous to be battling with Kyle Larson, but we made a move up the inside in turn three, and thankfully we clear the 42 of Kyle Larson, and we would be able to get away. Now as well, we would get to the inside now of Denny Hamlin as we came through on lap nine of 24 in this opening stage, clearing Hamlin for P13, and now trying to set, a, set our sights on the back of our teammate of Eric Almirola, and sure enough, as the the laps were on. We started closing the gap.
gap to Almirola, who was battling with Brad Kozlowski just up ahead of them in 10th place as Jimmy Johnson lowers his crumble behind. In the 17 of Ricky Stenos Jr. goes spinning, and that brings out a caution as Chase Elliott looked like he got a little bit of involvement in that incident, but we would come to the pit lane for some uh, fuel Four and tires three. and actually lose four Four positions ready. as we get ready to go back. Green now is once again we are underway here in Darlington past midway point of this first and opening stage. 11 laps remain. Almirola and Keselowski on the row in front of us as we go through turns one and turns two. Tyler Reddick is currently the leader, so the four positions that we lose, or we lost, sorry, I think are actually because four cars stayed out uh, on the track, so that certainly would make sense. This is Tyler Reddick leading, and I believe there's three other cars joining him up there. You do see, actually, maybe Kyle Larson uh, played a little bit of strategy because he finds himself in the third position, obviously, at the time of the caution. Larson in the 42 car was behind us. Now, as we go down this front straight away. Grant Kieslowski trying to look to the outside of myself as we look to the left-hand side of Alex Bowman as we go through turns one and it turns through there. You see the 20 of Eric Jones who won this race in real life earlier this season and then he went into the playoffs and did absolutely nothing unfortunately for himself and he got eliminated very early on as we came through. Now into turns one we had passed Joey Logano uh, as well now looking to the inside of Ryan Newman. There you see Matt Tift in the 36. We would get past him and here on lap 16 we had moved ourselves now inside of the top 10 and unfortunately though we came to 7 to go Blaney had actually gotten to my inside as we went down into turns one. A little bit of contact made with the 12 of Blaney and into the wall we went there as maybe a little bit of payback from the 12 of Ryan Blaney from, uh, I believe, a few episodes ago uh, at Pocono or Michigan, one of the tracks when we got into Joey Logano and Blaney got the short end of the stick on that one now as we would actually repass Kyle Larson after we had finally run him down. He's on older tires than us and now as he's right close to my back bumper but thankfully he isn't close enough to get into us as we hit time to go at this point in this first and opening right. stage run P11 as we were trying to chase down a 10th place of Alex Bowman or Jimmy Johnson and sure enough as we came to the white flag in this first stage Johnson running P10 we had closed in on him but certainly not close enough to that 48 of Jimmy Johnson as Tyler Reddick had continued to lead this race as we came out of turn two with just a half a lap to go in the stage it looks like Tyler Reddick's about to win stage one if nothing goes wrong as we go down this back straightaway into turns three and turns four for the final time here at Darlington Raceway up the inside though with the 48 now as we exit it turns four, but the 48 of Johnson has the momentum going down this front straightaway, and we're going to come through to cross the line to get P11 in this first and opening stage here at Darlington Raceway for the Southern 500. So a very solid first stage. Uh, would have been nice to get some stage points, uh, but obviously we would come to the pit lane after this stage for two cans of fuel and four tires. I didn't really want to make any adjustments because I felt like the car was driving okay. It's just we need to try and get some track position, which we do gain right there. Two positions on the pit lane, and we move up to P9. And we're ready to go green here now for stage two as the green flag is back out. Once again, we are underway. William Byron on my outside in that 10th position. Alex Bowman here in P8 and Blaney in P7 as we go down towards turns one. Tyler Reddick played the strategy card early in stage one with a yellow flag. And here he finds himself now with a playoff point after winning the stage. And now he leads as we exit turn two, heading down the spike straightaway. Bowman on my outside, Jimmy Johnson and William Byron side by side behind us. The two hundred teammates as we go down towards turns three and right towards that back bumper of the 18 to Kyle Busch actually had to get on the brakes pretty hard and uh, lost the back end a little bit there as we came out of turn four heading down this front straightaway side by side with the 24 of William Byron not the first time we've seen that 24 this race as we go down towards yeah, turns one Johnson trying to get to my left hand side but couldn't quite make the move work now as we come through the center of the corner Tyler Reddick continuing to lead as the 24 slid up the track for a moment I had to get out of the throttle and as we came through actually on lap five we had actually lost a position to the 48 of Jimmy Johnson I forgot to show that pass actually happened as we go down to towards turn three, but in front of us there's Triple Kyle Busch making some mistakes into the bunch of cars, including our teammate of Eric Almirola. We came through there and got through it without any issues as a caution, once again though, would fly and that would put us up to P10 as Kyle Busch is out of the Southern 500 here in Darlington. As a green flag though, once again, is back out. Actually, I might be wrong. Kyle Busch still might be in this race as there's one dot on the pit lane and I believe that's actually not for Kyle Busch. So Kyle Busch should still be here in this race for Darlington actually and he might actually have a chance to still come back and get a solid finish after it looked like he went down into turn three and just 
completely lost the car. Maybe he blew a tire. That would be my best guess uh, to say what happened to the 18 of Kyle Busch. Go down into turn three. Kurt Busch, uh, Kyle Busch's brother, obviously looks to our inside now as we come through the center of the corner. But Martin Truex Jr., though, now leads this race as we go down the front straightaway. So Tyler Reddick obviously has lost the lead as we cross the line, completing that first lap since the restart as Paul Menard clears us going down into turns one. So we drop down to the 12th position here in Darlington. So unfortunate now as Menard slides up the track. Certainly seems to be a bit of a habit from the AI as they like to slide up in turns two towards the exit of the corner. And we have to get out of the throttle as we do battle back, though, up the inside of Menard. And we would get past him and we would move our way back in the top 10 past 24 of William Byron. Now the uh, inside of the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, who had actually gotten into the wall just a little bit there. So he came through turns three and turn four. So up to P9 as you do see some damage on that 48. And we would actually climb up now to just about P8 battling with Tyler Reddick here, who is on my outside now as we come through turns one and it turns two towards the exit of the corners, but sideways on the exit of the corner and into the wall we go with the right rear though, and that puts a little bit of damage on the right hand side of the car. Now that allows the 24 of William Byron to get by, and that was our first kind of major hit to the wall this race, but we would fight back now once again passing Tyler Reddick, following William Byron through the traffic now as we came through on lap 19 of 22 in this second stage of the inside of the 24 again of Byron trying to make that pass on him. We've seen William Byron quite a bit in this race as we exit turn four, and as sure enough we came through to the white flag in the second stage now, still running behind that 24 car of William Byron, but now Joey Logano putting some pressure on from behind as we come through turns one and it turns through, trying to get to the right hand side of Byron as he slid up once again on the exit of the corner as we head down this back straight away for the final time here in the second stage close on that 24 as we're going to go down into turn 3 side by side we make contact with the 24 and both of us get into the wall now as Logano is going to go up the inside and pass myself and William Byron as we exit turns 4 right on that left rear of the 24 as we cross the line and get P10 here in the second stage so a bit of a wild the uh, final half a lap or so there's what Martin Truex Jr. does get the stage victory and it picks up another playoff point as we would uh, once again pit for two cans of fuel and four tires here at the stage break. A little bit of damage on the car that we would have to repair and we would actually still gain a position on the pit lane and move up to P9 here for the start of the third and final All stage right, at Darlington. Kurt Busch actually up front. Martin Truex Jr. lost a bunch of positions because he won the stage and now he's a row behind us as the green flag is out for the third and final stage here in Darlington. 40 laps to go. So definitely a very lengthy final stage as we go down towards turns one and turns two of the inside of the 10 of Eric Almarola as we come through the center of this corner. So Kurt Busch right now in a really good position as we nearly make contact with our teammate of Almarola as we go down this back straightaway trying to edge him out as we go down towards turns three and turns four. Tyler Reddick behind us gone to the wall. I can see that in my rear view mirror as you see our teammate of Kevin Harvick actually up in that second position as Almarola fights back on the outside as we go down this front straightaway. He gets clear as we go down towards turns one as we lose that position behind our teammate of the ten of Eric Almarola as we get close to his back bumper as we come through the center of turns one and turns two and we do get into the right rear just a little bit and we nearly hit the wall Almarola sideways but he makes an incredible save as we go down this back straightaway losing a position now to Eric Jones as we go down towards turns three and turns four now as we would actually fight back to Almarola as we came through now on left 57 getting into the left rear once again of Almarola as he's going to slide up the track now going into the outside wall and we nearly hit him now on the exit of the corner but we both keep it straight getting pretty aggressive here with our teammate of Almarola both times when we hit him was completely accidental but it certainly cannot be denied that and I just drove into him both times, unfortunately. Unfortunately, And now as it came through on flat 61, at least driving away from Almarola at this point, and actually running down Eric Jones. But once again, there's more trouble behind us. Tyler, or Ty Dillon goes spinning, and he gets hit by another car there that's going past. And he's going up and over on his roof nearly now, on his side for sure. And he would land it and continue on, as the caution, though, obviously would come out as the car did go flipping. We would not come to the pit lane, so we get right back into the action here from P9 as the green flag once again is out in Darlington. Blaney and Jones on the row in front of us as Kurt Busch still has a strong car. He is up front leading this race still as we come through turns one. Bowman actually joined him on that front row. Kevin Harvick in P3 obviously kind of setting the pace for the Stuart Haas racing clan now as we came out of turn two. Jones actually got into the wall. We did not get uh, into him. 
So that was all driver error there on Eric Jones' go down into turns three and turns four. So up to P8 right, at this point as we came through now on lap 69. Still running eighth behind William Byron getting loose here on the exit of the corner. But Truex, we know he's one of the fastest cars in the field. He got to me and I just said, okay, I'll move to the side and let Martin Truex Jr. go because it certainly did not quite make any sense to hold him up as he looks at the inside of William Byron and he's just going to drive right on past the 24. And sure enough, he would try to battle back though as we look to the inside of Byron as we came through turns one and turns two. Now on lap 73, Kyle Busch behind us at this point. So I would let Kyle Busch go and as we came through turns one and turns two. Now on lap 75, as we come out of turns two, the car just completely snaps on us and spinning into the inside while we go heavy contact on the inside wall and the caution's going to fly. 15 seconds of damage, which means we have to give up one lap on the pit lane due to my custom DNF rule. This is the first time it's coming into effect here in, I believe, this career mode in general, or maybe just, or no, it's in the first time in the Cup Series. We did have it in the Xfinity Series one time. Uh, so there we go. The field went by. We've uh, fixed up the car, losing one lap, and unfortunately, uh, obviously, now a big setback. We were running uh, a 10th, well, maybe 8th or 9th around that area to 12th, 13th, and as we came through now, passing some of these guys on four fresh tires at this point, but unfortunately, the caution wasn't coming out. We needed a caution if we wanted to have a chance to come back from that incident. But the car just snapped on me. It's simple as that. I came out of turn two and lost it. Unfortunately, the caution never came out here in Darlington. As we come through now, starting the final lap here in the Southern 500, Martin Truex Jr. is actually coming through turns three and turns four at this moment as he comes out of the corner. Martin Truex Jr. is actually going to come through to get win number three on the season and be like the sixth driver to do that now as we came through turn three of the inside there of Chase Elliott nearly as we come through the center of the corner. A great uh, or a decent race from us as we come out of turn four. Unfortunately, went downhill as the car just snapped out from under me. We crossed the line to finish P37 here in Darlington. Like I said, uh, we, I just came out of turn two and the car just went out of control. The back end just snapped and I just didn't have enough time. I could have tried to turn the car back right, but at the time I was just fully on the brakes hoping that I wouldn't smash into the inside wall. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. We hit 15 seconds of damage, which means we had to give up one lap. Uh, I didn't have a media quote after that race, but uh, I mean, it was pretty straightforward. We just went and crashed the car and that was pretty much it. So an unfortunate one for us for sure. Don't let that last race get you down. Remember, you're here for a reason and people believe in you. Thank you, Alex Bowman, for reading that script very well. Uh, BJ McLeod says, what a tough race that was. And obviously, Eric Amorla, not very happy with us after that race, which is understandable. But uh, if always, or as always, if guys enjoyed that episode, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, especially if you enjoyed the throwback weekend here in Darlington. It certainly was a fun one. Only one race remains here in the regular season, though, and you're about to see the grid on your screen. And basically, the grid that we have now will stay the same unless we get a new winner outside of the top 16 at Indianapolis, but there's like six drivers now with three wins, so that's going to make things interesting. But there you see that's the top 16, and like I said, that will stay the exact same if we do not have a winner outside of the top 16 at the next one in Indianapolis. So we'll set the playoff grid in the next episode, so that should be a fun one. We'll see what everything looks like in Indianapolis and after. So thank you for watching, everyone, and have yourselves a great day.